Carpe Diem, my name is Ultranatic, and here's another Total Drama Vlog, going again over Total Drama Island 2023 with the newest episode, Wheel of Vomit. Uh, I have no gripes about the actual episode title, I mean, it, it, it's about exactly what you think it's about. Uh, in fact, uh, when I first heard this title, I was getting immediate flashbacks to Brunch of Disgustingness, which for those who don't know is my least favorite episode of the first season of the original Total Drama. And it's a pretty apt comparison because, again, same challenge. Uh, now with a wheel involved. But also apt in that, this is, this is probably a bit of a hot take. I like this episode less than Jurassic Far. I, 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 I would actually consider it a worse episode. And a lot, I know a lot of people are like, really? You think this is worse than the episode where there's like all this farting going on in a way that looks very questionable? Honestly, yes. Uh, I don't expect everybody to share the same opinion about Jurassic Park as I do. And I won't call it a good episode by any means. But I will say I at least see redeemable elements about it more so than I do with this episode. And I'm sure a lot of people have picked up on something uh, with my channel. Because my least favorite episodes of each season so far have been Brunch of Disgustingness, uh, uh, The Chef Shank Redemption, and I won't say yet what my least favorite episode of World Tour is, but spoilers, it's going to have an eating challenge involved somewhere that I'm not going to be a fan of. I'm sure many of you can pick up what it is from that point onward. But the weird thing is, it's not specifically the eating challenge that makes me hate it. I mean, maybe it should, but given that these kind of challenges have been a major staple in reality shows, especially Survivor and Fear Factor, for a long time, I can kind of get into that as long as they're very creative with what they make these dishes, uh, what these dishes are and how disgusting they can be. And they do that. Like, I give them full props on that level because you, you got to use a little bit of that. Uh, uh, you got to use some creative juices there to really make this an entertaining episode. And they do. Uh, full props there. It's other extenuating circumstances that make me hate it. I don't know how that even adds up, but uh, I guess I'll have to show you when I go over the episode. Uh, we see uh, Chase celebrating in the dining room about him and Emma getting back together, which surprises Ripper and Z. More so Ripper. Z's barely remember that they were a couple. That's appropriate. Uh... Chase says, a gentleman never kisses and tells. I kind of want to pull up that Three Stooges quote where Shemp goes, they ain't for us, we're not gentlemen. Speak for yourself. Oh, like that. Uh, because, yeah, Chase, not a gentleman, of course, that's not going to apply to you. Uh, although I don't agree with you, like, so, I think people know about you and Emma, so what point is it made? But the fact you have no honor doesn't surprise me. Uh, we see Julia getting more followers on her social media feed after the whole raptor incident because of course she should. You verbally took down a raptor. That should get you more followers. How'd you lose, a, how you lost so many, I have no clue. Uh, we see Bowie in the girls' cabin. That's the first guy being in the girls' cabin. I mean, gay, so I, I know he's not doing anything like there with that, so that's fine. Uh, we see in confession that Julie says she's never had more more followers than that, which uh, uh, supposedly is true because she claimed previously to have lost three hundred thousand followers before. And if you look in the episode, it says that she now has over three million. That is, in fact, massive upgrade. Although on the post we see her on, despite having that many followers, her post only has like two thousand likes or ju just under two thousand likes actually. And uh, under th uh, less than 300 comments. I have no idea how that checks out, but that's a nitpick. I'm not going to act like that ruins anything. Uh, Bowie gets up and uh, puts on his shoes, only to find that Raj left him a present, his mouth guard. Ah, uh, I guess. Look, I, I like these two, but, and, I, and I, that's in character for Raj. It's still kind of nasty. Uh, he leaves a adorably stupid poem about, you know... Santa Claus is from the north, which is not in the south. I want you to have this bit in my mouth. <laughs> that is so schmaltzy and dumb that you kind of gotta love it. And then Bowie uh, 
for, uh, with Raj as inspiration, vows to win the competition, and puts the mouth guard in his mouth. Oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Did you learn nothing from Beth in Total Drama Action? Again. I, t I really don't like that moment either, because Beth, you didn't watch that off even a little bit. You just put it in straight forward. Just... Mm. <laughs> I'll be fair, like, if these two became a couple, then maybe the mouth guard thing would be a little better. But it's not just that it's been inside Bowie's mouth, it's also been inside Bowie's shoe. The cast encounter is going to go off the fritz when I get to this episode. Again, not, not a medical professional by any means, but... Just go off of common sense, but come on, don't do stuff like that. We see Chris serving breakfast for ones, which is uh, peculiar. Apparently, chefs make it food for a challenge, and he's serving them rainbow colored slop. That does come into play later. We see Emma is still smitten by Chase. I'm not gonna lie, this is a major turning point for the episode for me because, much like how in the last episode, it, uh, bewildered me how they even got back together the fact they're still together here and what progresses with them here still makes no sense but we'll get to more of that we see julia continue to bully people throughout the cast uh she like elbows bowie she pushes emma into chase's lap which i'm guessing she was grateful for so i was much of a bully and she gives wedgies to uh i believe it was ripper and z uh, <laughs> I'll admit, ballsy move, Julia. I argue kind of dumb for strategy, but it's great for entertainment. She claims that, yeah, I'm going to keep being like this, and hey, they can't vote me out for one immunity, which, true, but that's a pretty short-sighted strategy. You want to get to the end, don't you? <laughs> I'm not going to say that, that makes her a bad character. Far from it. I love how evil she is. I'm not going to lie. She's almost giving Heather a run for her money. I mean, at, at least I saw Heather kind of redeeming herself and she was just so game driven that that sort of affected her behavior but even then she knew how to be human with a few people every once in a while whereas julia kind of just pff, tosses out the window completely <laughs> i'm like oh that's refreshing and i she's a believable villain i just I, again i just feel like the, this strategy if you will is very short sighted on her part uh so, uh, but anyway, she says that they can't put me out if I keep winning immunity. Define keep. Because you've yet to win individual immunity yet. In fact, you could have gone home in the last vote had Wayne and Raj not gotten so horribly injured. But whatever, again, that's an epic. We see Bowie has gum in his hair because Julia uh, elbowed him. We, uh, Emma helps him pull it out. But Bowie's, of course, skeptical as to why Emma forgave Chase. As he should be. <laughs> it, it, it's... I'm with Bowie on this one. Makes us entire right back together. Uh, challenges revealed to be the Wheel of Vomit. I don't think I need to really reveal what why it's called that. The characters are all given goggles, which Chase is confused as to why they have goggles on. And Julia's like, because it's the Wheel of Vomit, you doorknob. You see, maybe I'd be more against Julia being a horrible villain, maybe akin to Amy from Pocket to Island if she didn't actually have memorable parts to her being a bully. But she does. I can work with this. Again, I'm not saying you have to like the bully, but villains exist on these shows for a reason. If it's all buddy, 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 it's not going to be very much fun. Whereas if you have somebody to root against at all, like Julia, that does in fact make the viewing experience a lot more enjoyable. Uh... We see that Priya, uh, she claims that to, be, to uh, be prepared because her parents have had her eat liver and ice cream growing up. Again, your parents are kind of horrible. And even then, let's pretend, like, I understand they're trying to prepare you for this show. Liver and ice cream is not the least bit sufficient for these eating challenges. You gotta go several, several, several steps beyond that. I mean, I'm, ha I'm happy your parents didn't do that. But it's one of those things where I'm like, that's not gonna win you anything, sorry. The first dish is apparently old, sweaty boot beef. Beef stuffed in like an old boot that people have to eat. Uh, we see uh, Emma, or sorry, uh, Millie just completely opt out, which Priya is aghast at. Like, that affects our alliance. I don't know about that. I think you would have been fine otherwise. Now, it's kind of dumb on Millie's part to say that she does that because she's fine under the radar. Even MK, when she said that, was smart enough to not say that in front of people. Em, like, Millie says that in front of everybody. 
So yeah, it's not really an under radar play if you tell everybody what you're doing. They're gonna see through that. Uh, but uh, yeah, Bowie tries eating first and vomits quickly. I, I, again, there's so many casualty counts in this, episode, in this episode. Even if he vomits, if I to eat it at all, I would call for a hospital visit. Uh, but otherwise, everybody else makes it. The, the second dish is pork snout with a severe cold, which is a, likened in the episode to like like a bacon soup, if you will. And if you're wondering what else I don't care for in the episode, it's that some of the humor is kind of lame. We got Julia, after Z makes that bacon soup comparison, saying, that is not like bacon soup. But then Emma says, you mean it's snot like bacon soup. This isn't meant for four-year-olds. You can do better with the commies than this. Uh... Anyway, Julia then tries grossing out Z, because he's apparently really good at this challenge, by talking about an alien movie, which he says, I'd really rather not talk about it. So, Julia then goes into great detail, actually describing said movie. Uh, but it doesn't phase Z whatsoever. She's like, well then why didn't you want to talk about it? I found the dialogue still to them, the ending forced. <laughs> okay, that's funny, because you don't expect to hear Z talking that intelligently. <laughs> And for all I know, he's probably right. I mean, for all I know, I think she might have been talking about, like, whatever that world's equivalent of Alien Resurrection were. Resurrection, as in the fourth Alien movie, not re Alien Resurrection, if you will. Uh, the uh, next dish is uh, apparently a croissant with hair and lice in it, which Z downs easily. Uh, but Julia tries to make him sneeze with pepper, and it actually works, but he then vaults across the room and gets it in his mouth again. Again, nauseating, but kind of badass on Z's part. I'm going to give him a point for that, too. Uh, we see uh, we see Emma and Chase feed each other their croissants, and I'm not going to lie, as disgusting as the food is in this episode, seeing them be all... I don't know what's on the roof right now, but seeing them be all lovey-dovey like that... <sighs> That would make me gag before any of this food. I'm sorry, because you have no reason whatsoever to actually be a couple. Chase wants it. Emma doesn't really, and she just, she just doesn't realize it. Uh, but uh, here's the funny thing. You know how I complained in the last episode that it was forced that Emma forgave Chase for, like, it, with almost no real backing. Well, as forced as it was they got back together, they very forcibly break up again right after this. Because then it's kind of revealed for no good reason that Chase didn't apologize for cutting her breaks. In fact, he thought it was a cool, funny prank. And he was just apologizing for the candy bar thing. And then she tries ending it with Chase. I'm like, so what in God's good glory was the point of you getting back together at all? I just don't get it. Like, I, I would have assumed, oh, it was to save Chase from, elim from elimination in the last episode. Well, that wasn't going to happen anyway because, you know, Wade and Raj go home. What difference did it really make? If anything, that would have made it more suspenseful had it been, like, an elimination vote between Julia and Chase because people didn't like them. Or even Ripper in that case. But, no, you, you could have cut that out and missed nothing. In fact, it would have made the episode better because that's... The, the one thing about it that made me want to put the episode even lower. So, so yeah, this was a bad idea entirely. So they get each other out of the competition by saying a bunch of trigger words, if you will. When I say trigger words, I mean more in the sense of like traumatic, gross memories from their childhood to make them vomit, stuff like that. It works. They both they both get eliminated. Chase still wants Emma back. Chase, you're almost as bad as Sierra. Almost. I'm not going to go that far. But almost. <laughs> the fact that I'm even considering comparing you to Sierra is a bad, bad sign. Oh my god. Uh, the next up is, the uh, next dish is a, wa is a wiggle fries, basically a maggot poutine, which uh, gets Priya out of the competition next because the maggots keep crawling up her throat. Makes sense. We gotta kill those little suckers. Uh... Then the, then the uh, fifth dish is toe jam cookies, and while those are disgusting enough as is, the characters kind of get through that okay. It's uh, uh, Ripper then asks about the white liquid they're all drinking. What what, what what kind of horrible concoction is this? Chris is like, it's just average milk. 
which I'm not really sure, which, which could, could still contribute to the vomiting for all I know, but at the very least it's something that you can ingest. Uh, but Z is unfamiliar with what milk even is. Julia takes advantage of this and describes where milk comes from in as disgusting a manner as humanly possible. And it works pretty well. And again, I'll admit, it's kind of funny that Z is not grossed out by any of these dishes, but is grossed out by a common everyday drink that most people can have. Again, unless you're allergic or maybe even if you're lactose intolerant. But it's something that a de like a good majority of people can drink. But yeah, that, that outs Z from the competition. So it comes down to Julian Ripper with Ripper going, I am pain. No argument here. <laughs> Uh, they go through a bunch of different gross food challenge, gross foods that they each get through, and eventually comes down to a tiebreaker where Chris comes up with uh, a 50-foot tapeworm to eat, which even Chef's like, kids, don't eat that. Even my other dishes pretended to be edible. Uh, and funny enough, we actually get a confessional where the tapeworm talks. What, what am I going to act like? That's not a little funny? That's a little funny. <laughs> uh, so Ripper uh, and Julia try to get to the middle, because uh, the winner of this challenge is whoever gets to the middle of this tapeworm, which is colored with beet juice. We wouldn't do this with actual ink. We're not, we're not, kinda, we're not monsters. Mm, compared to before, I'll agree at least. <laughs> Although, let's be fair. These, challenge, th these courses here would kill a person. Any of them. Especially this one. Anyway, they ingest it. Uh... And Ripper's like, I'm, I'm not only going to win immunity, but I'm going to finally kiss a girl. Which I've done before, of course. Again, not going to like the episode's totally wasted because that's a pretty funny moment there. Uh, but Julia, of course, wins. And that's the thing. I would say that her bullying the contestants and just saying, I'm going to use immunity to keep going, would be a terrible strategy if she didn't have this level of tenacity. Which is good, because some people would be like, it's probably going to be a cakewalk. No, it's not a cakewalk. But she backs up her talk, and I do respect that about Julia. Of course, it results in Ripper losing and, you know, beginning to throw up the rest of the, uh, the rest of what he had inside of him, and everybody else vomits too. The challenge was just, you know, whoever can eat a tapeworm first, but let's assume for a second that the vomit rule still took effect. Ripper does vomit before Julia, so either way, this works out. So, go on the show for that. But yeah, everybody vomits that rainbow-colored vomit, and that's the thing. I would say I appreciate the diversity in the color palette with the rainbow-colored vomit here, because it was all just like putrid green and a little bit of brown in there, and orange and before then, but here it's a little more varied, but I don't know. When I saw the whole spew fest of vomit afterwards, it's... It just wasn't really my thing to watch all of that happen. Maybe it's PTSD for me. I, I, I don't know if that's the, the right word for this, but I have gastroesophageal reflux disease. I've had a, too many vomiting episodes to count, personally. I'm trying my best to get Pat to uh, heal from that. So maybe that didn't really sit with me. Thankfully, I'm not triggered by other people vomiting. So that's, a good, that's good on my part. Anyway, uh... In the end, it's Ripper who does go home. And while I'm happy for that, since uh, between him and Chase, I'm not sure which character I like less, but at least I know you're supposed to hate Ripper. But here's the funny thing. The ending kind of drags this down again because I'm not entirely sure how Ripper goes home. It's kind of like when Jeff goes home in uh, Try on Triathlon. I'm like, okay, even with the contestants... Uh, explaining their votes, it actually makes a lot of the other votes inexplicable. Uh, because it's revealed that Emma's voting for Chase. No surprise there. Bowie is voting for Millie because she's voting on the radar. Okay, he doesn't actually say that, but he implies it at least. And Priya outright says, yes, I'm voting for Millie to scare her. Wow, that's a bad idea. Look, I know, Mil I know Millie might have done... A few things in the past two episodes that you might not have 100% agreed with. But that's just a bad strategic move to get out an obvious ally like that. Jesus. Uh, and of course it comes down to Ripper and Millie. Now, three votes are accounted for as to who didn't vote Ripper. And Ripper wouldn't vote for himself. Which mean, Now, granted, even if Ripper also voted for Millie, that would make a 
three to one, and four votes left would get out Ripper. The problem is who's going out Ripper. You got Millie and Julia, those I understand, and then and then by default Chase and Z. I thought y'all were friends. Well, I guess if that were the case in this whole episode, we'd be people voting out their friends, which makes no sense for goodness sake. But yeah, I, I, I need a little more clarification on why, on who voted out Ripper and why. This is why I'd love to see some actual voting confessionals still in total drama, because I don't think that really makes any sense. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, we get, uh, Ripper gets taken out again via Wedgie. I guess that was twi that's twice in the same episode. That's bad. And the episode ends. That was Will of Vomit. Again, I can't say that it was awful. But it's just... It, it had too many things that got on my nerves. Especially with Emma and, and uh, Chase again being buddy-buddy. Then breaking up again. Making everything we just went through pointless with that. Uh, several... Uh, a couple questionable moments, I guess. Especially the ending... Again, I might be happy Ripper went home, but the way he goes home doesn't make sense to me. So, yeah, if I had to pick the episode I have the most problems with, it would be this one. But I'm not going to add, like, even if it were the worst of this season, that it's one of the worst episodes, period. I mean, it'd be, it'd be in contention somewhere, maybe, but I can think of episodes that made my worst of list that are far more hateable and far less redeemable than this. Because that is a good thing about this season. Even the worst episodes have a decent good amount of quality in it. And I think it is because the showrunners do care to a degree about making this a good send-up to the original while fixing problems from the past. And I do appreciate that to a high extent. But uh, yeah, those are my thoughts on Will Vomit. Didn't really care for it, but... I guess, to be fair, I have seen worse throughout this whole series. Uh, but yeah, that concludes this uh, vlog, and I can't wait to see y'all in the next one. Take care.